Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we are holding our first fall Sunday fun day and it's been the first one since February of 2020. Back before the pandemic, we would do this once a month. What we do on Sunday fun day is bring everyone together for our whole morning together. Kids, seniors, and everyone in between. I really believe there is benefit in generations learning from each other, sharing with one another, and engaging together. This fall, we've been discovering the ways we can learn from kids, and we have always known that older generations can impart wisdom and experience into our journey of faith. So let's bring that all together. So that is what we are doing today, October 31st. Uh, but first, let's play a little game called This or That. So because today we're thinking of the idea of fall and harvest and all the things we can learn spiritually about our lives from that and about God, I'm going to give you a little quiz and you just get to choose this or that. So I'm going to give you two options and you pick this or that. So here's the first one. Apple pie or pumpkin pie? Which do you pick? All right, how about the next one? Pumpkin spice lattes or apple cider? Hot or cold, I prefer cold. All right, are you gonna pick this or that? Would you rather visit an apple orchard or visit a pumpkin patch? All right, how about this fun game? Would you rather bob for apples or bob for pumpkins? Here's a real delicious one. Would you rather eat a candied apple or eat a candied pumpkin? And lastly, which would you rather pick? Carving pumpkins or carving apples? Well, thanks for playing this or that. Hopefully it wasn't too hard decisions. So pumpkins or apples? We're gonna learn some stuff about ourselves and about God and about faith and we're going to look to apples and pumpkins to help us understand these things. Well, it's that time of year again, the time of the year for harvesting. Farmers have, are finishing the end of bringing in crops, preparing silage to feed livestock. The bounty of spring and summer weather are being brought into the barns and stores to keep everything fed and moving through the winter. And that reminds us of some promises we have from God for our lives. The first thing is that we are made to abide in Jesus. Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If any remain in me and I remain in them, they'll produce much fruit. But without me, they can do nothing. If they don't remain in me, they're like a branch that is thrown away and then dies. People pick up dead branches and throw them into the fire to burn them. That's what I just did with my gardening. Uh, the, all the dead branches, gather them up, and Isaac and I burn them. And as we abide in Jesus and grow closer to Jesus, we experience a harvest, that producing of fruit. As we abide in Jesus, grow closer to Jesus, we experience a harvest. Jesus says we will produce much fruit. Abiding means we become friends with Jesus. The more we spend time with Jesus, the more we get to know him. Think of a friend you have. Did you hang out with them to get to know them? Probably if you know that they like swimming more than skating, uh, or they really like watermelon but they don't like ice cream, that's because you spent time with them. Abiding with Jesus is the same. Abiding in Jesus means we become his friend and we spend time with Jesus. And when we obey Jesus, Jesus says we will take in a harvest of fruit, blessings. There was a time when Peter, one of Jesus' friends and disciples, said to him, Master, we worked hard all night trying to catch fish and we caught nothing. But you say, put our nets in the water, so I will. There's a lot of people that come to the lake around here and fish, but we're using poles. Back then they were using big nets and even still commercial fishermen use nets. And so it says, when the fishermen did as Jesus told them, they caught so many fish that the nets began to break. Jesus told them what they should do, so they did it. They listened and were obedient, and then they had way more than they needed. So I would encourage you to pray this prayer. Jesus, thank you that you want us to get to know you like we do our best friends. 
I want to learn things about you that I haven't learned before and discover more. And as I obey, I know you're going to bring lots of blessings. So let's play a game. Come on, it's going to be fun. Take some time to play hot potato with the people you're watching with. We're going to be using a pumpkin as our potato in the church building, but you find something that works for you. Pause the video and have some fun playing, and when you're done with that game, come on back here to hear what's next. How was Hot Potato? Did you have a strategy to win or did you just pass it furiously? When we play hot potato, we're trying to get rid of something fast. But one thing about harvest is that we're gathering up all these delicious things. And while we celebrate harvest once a year, the spiritual harvest we experience all year long. So what are some of the spiritual harvests that we get? Well, during this time of year, we remember that God provides so much for us. We celebrate Thanksgiving. It's all about giving thanks for what we are, uh, what we have, and what we're blessed with. October is a great month where I also get to celebrate my wife and our anniversary, thanking God for her and for the marriage that we have. I also get to celebrate my son and his birthday, thankful for him and all that he is and brings to our family. He is awesome. Take a minute to pause the video and ask God, what am I thankful for? Then write down all the things that God brings to your mind. Write till there's nothing left in your mind. And after you've done that, come on back here and keep watching for what's next. You know, the Bible tells us so many things about how God provides for us. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, it says, You can be sure that God will take care of everything you need. His generosity is exceeding even yours in the glory that pours from Jesus. In Matthew 6, verse 30 and 31, it says, Don't worry and say, What will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? The people who don't know God keep trying to get these things, and your Father in heaven knows that you need them. It goes on to say a couple verses later, Seek the kingdom of God. Uh, above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need so we just need to trust God look to God and give thanks for all the ways God provides for us and God is gonna look after each one of us so I shouldn't just assume that everyone has carved a pumpkin before but I don't know if you have ever made anything out of pumpkin but if you've ever opened a pumpkin uh, look at this thing look at all the seeds that come from just, this is just a tiny pumpkin. Isn't it amazing? It's only one pumpkin, but it holds all the potential for a whole pumpkin patch. God gives just like all the seeds in this pumpkin. It's loaded, loaded up. One God, but so many blessings are held inside. So let's discover them, find them, and plant them, because this reminds us of what we want to remember next. But first, Let's play another game. Hopefully you have some apples at your house, but if not, use whatever you can find to have a stacking competition. I want you to stack your apples or whatever you have to see who can stack the tallest tower. Okay, so get a measuring tape just in case you set a world record. So it was hard to find, but I think the record for most apples stacked is eight by record holder Andy Kite. So see if you can beat that. Uh, pause the video and then come back for what we're going to do next. All those pumpkin seeds remind us that God grows things in our life, grows fruit in our life. When Jesus said to abide in him and you will produce much fruit, what do you think he's talking about? I think when people are close to Jesus, we see things in their life like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, being faithful, gentle, and able to control yourself. In fact, these are called the fruit of God's Holy Spirit. 
These are the things that grow in our life and they are awesome. They taste great and they make life better for others and for us. And because fruit has seeds, it reproduces so more can come. So if God provides for us, we can also remember that we can provide for others. Remember, when we abide with Jesus, not only are we given blessings, but we bear fruit, much fruit that can be shared. An apple tree wouldn't be too good if we only got one apple, but even that one apple has seeds. So there's stuff in there enough to create some more apple trees. Then when more apples grow, I can have some, I can give some away, I can sell some to make some money, to buy maybe more land, to plant more trees, to give more apples. The blessings never have to end. With all the fruit being produced and provided, that can allow me to make apple pie, canned apples, caramel apples, apple crumble, apple sauce, apple cider, apple muffins, apple mimosas, apple fritters, apple pancakes, and good old apple slices. God's blessings give us opportunity to give to others, to bless others, to care for others, and we can experience joy in our life when we can be generous, even with what little we may have. Take a minute to pause the video and ask God, what things can I share from my life? And then write down what God brings to your mind. Then come back and start the video again for what is next. The ancient scriptures give us all sorts of insights in being generous and giving. In Luke chapter 6 verse 38 it says, Give and you will receive. You'll be given much, pressed down, shaken together and running over. It will spill into your lap. The way you give to others is the way God will give to you. In Deuteronomy 15 it says, There will always be poor people in the land, so I command you to give freely to your neighbors and to the poor and needy in your land. And in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16, it says, Don't forget to do good and to share what you have because God is pleased with these kinds of sacrifices. We can be filled with joy when out of all that God provides, we can give to others. Maybe it's some food. Maybe it's some time. Maybe you give kindness, a listening ear, or some hands to help with an odd job like mowing the grass or shoveling some snow. Maybe you run an errand or read someone some verses from the Bible. Maybe you share some artwork or play a game of Scrabble. If you're finding it hard to give, ask God to grow some fruit in your life so that you can have some and some can be given to others. Do it, ask God and see what happens. Well, I hope you had some fun today and were reminded that God wants to spend time with you, that God has many things to give you and that you have much to share with others. Remember the harvest. You can produce much fruit. God is giving good things. God also wants you to give good things. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Would you work to see a harvest, to bring it all in? Would you join God to see many good things come to you and others? And would you, as Jesus said, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into this harvest? Peace.